Hello sports fans, Larry Allen here at the KGAS studios and to my left is Scott Surratt, the head football coach and athletic director at Carthage High School. The Carthage Bulldog portion of Pigskin Preview brought to you by Worthington AC and Plumbing. And of course at this time of the year, the Carthage portion is the only portion because Carthage is the only team that we cover uh, that is still in the playoffs. Well, the Bulldogs are now regional champs for the 10th time in Coach Surratt's 13 years. Actually, 10 out of the last 12 years they've been regional champs. Another way of putting it, for the 10th time in the last 12 years, we're going to be in the regional semifinals. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But last Friday night over at the Tomato Bowl, third appearance for Carthage at the Tomato Bowl, and we knocked off Midlothian Heritage 24-7. Uh, the key statistic for me, at least, one that just jumps out at me, Heritage averaging 406 yards of total offense per game, and I had him with 173. Great performance. Again, that defense leading the way. Well, phenomenal performance. Uh, another great game plan by Coach Preston and his staff, and uh, uh, our players played unbelievably hard and executed a game plan, and, you know, we got some turnovers and, uh, you know, hold those guys to 170 yards or, or so. Uh, that's, that's an incredible effort, and... Um, you know, so just very, very proud of our defense and our staff. And, and uh, boy, I tell you what, the, as far as injuries are concerned, uh, everything's coming together at just the right time. Rayvon Ingram played. You showed us at Chalk Talk. He, he had some good plays, some plays where he wasn't quite the old Rayvon, but he played. He did, and he's uh, he's trusting it more now in practice and stuff. And you know he's coming off that ankle injury, and I think you I think you'll trust it more this week, and I think you'll see him making more plays instead of instead of being hesitant on a blitz or two, and uh, but that he missed. And uh, I promise you, if he's healthy, he's not going to miss them. And uh, we th we think he's getting really close to 100 percent now. Very good, and I believe you said at Chalk Talk, in your opinion, Cole Whitlock is at 100 percent now. Cole is is 100 percent. Um, we, you know, I think he's ready to roll. He hadn't been down in a couple of weeks, so I think he's ready to go. And uh, you've got him at least in this last game at back at safety. And you know, if I had to pick one player for a half of football that had the best performance of the year defensively, it might be him up at Pleasant Grove. That was some kind of a night. <laughs> well, I know if you ask Pleasant Grove, that's who they'd pick, <laughs> and because uh, he was our most valuable player, and then didn't even play a whole first half. And so that's how good a game he, he did have. All right, to uh, Friday night, the Bulldogs go up against Lampasas, and let's talk about the location first. Tell us how that came down. We always – and folks want to hear, you know, was that an agreement between the coaches? Was it a flip? What happened? Well, I, we had McKinney on Friday night, you know, the brand-new stadium at McKinney. It, it, it's, I hear it's incredible. I had pictures sent to me, and it, it's beautiful. And uh, Coach Smith from South Lake Carroll and those guys played there last week, and he said, if you get this place, it's, uh, you know, unbelievable. So – that's where, you know, I, I he called me after the game. We did not have a site. And um, he said, um, you know, I said, I have McKinney. We already had it. And and he said, well, what do you think about New Caney? And I says, I'll play in New Caney. I mean, it was um, shorter for us, uh, easier drive, I think, not going into the, you know, the die. It's going to be 10 degrees warmer there and, um, you know, no wind. And, you know, this was all last week on the forecast. And it looks like the forecast was right. for. And uh, so, um, you know, and it's an hour further for those guys, which is not going to be a difference in the game. We have driven an hour, two hours, three hours, even when we used to play Silsby and stuff. And mm -hmm. it's not a difference in the game. It's the way you handle traveling and things. But that's kind of how we, we handled it. He won a new caning. I said, we'll play you a new caning. It was real easy. And then we flipped for home, and he won that, And uh, which, you know, we we wore red last week. So we, we didn't really care on that. And, and uh, you know, dressing rooms are exactly the same, home visitor. So we're we're excited. Um, it's our time of year. It's what we tell the players, and, and we're excited to be where we're at. But we know we're got some unfinished business, and um, this is where this is where our, our ship sunk last year. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully we uh, we got a better captain this year. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully I can do a better job captain in that that ship and um, and and play better. All right, so uh, new ca the new ca pardon me the uh, the coach from uh, Lampasas brought that up. Well, very good. All right, now mentioned the defensive performance last week. 
Uh, boy, the defense is going to have to come up big time again on Friday night. Lamb Pass is averaging over 50 points per ball game. And uh, so tell us, uh, give us a scouting report on them. Well, they just fired all over the yard and, you know, they run it well. They, they, they try to stay balanced, that's for sure. The quarterback's a great player. Uh, when you, you're 51 to 3 ratio as far as touchdowns, interceptions, you've had a phenomenal year. And, and they got two, three really good receivers. Um, uh, one of them's a slot receiver, number one. I believe he was the uh, state 300 hurdles champion last year. And uh, he leads them in receptions, but the two big guys outside lead them in touchdowns and uh, yards per catch. And 22 and 33, good backs. They got big offensive line. You know, it's going to be very challenging for a defense, but, uh, you know, we got a lot of pride on that side, obviously, and mm -hmm. we've had a phenomenal season over there. Uh, maybe the best in Carthage history, and we want to continue to do that. And uh, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to uh, watching that match up myself. Um, their offense against our defense, but um, I think we'll be up for the challenge, and, and uh, we just got to play well. All right, now tell us about uh, their them defensively. De defensively, they base out of a three-four or fifty fifty front, and um, you know their their linebackers. Um, 15 and 25 are very good. 25 is very physical. 15 can really run. Um, you know, their nose guard number four is very, very athletic. And in the back end of it, 27, 21 are safeties. And uh, we think some of their their strength are, of their team are their corners, are eight, 13, and they'll bring in five. Um, so we think they're very talented, and we're going to have to execute very well. All right, from what you've just described, uh, key players on offense and defense, sounds like they don't have too many going both ways. Is that right? Five go by, both ways some, and you, uh, you'll see one every now and there uh, go both ways. But other than that, no. 33 plays some starting outside linebacker and comes in at some tailback. But other than that, I don't think too many play both ways. Scott, how much of a how much of an influence has the fact that you don't have anyone going both ways? How much how big has that been this year? Well, when you can work all the time one way, I think that's a big benefit. And, uh, you know, we do have some backup players that have to switch over um, and work defense in case somebody goes down or, or vice versa. But, oh, it's a big deal when I think you can stay fresh and, and um, you know, it's, it's a big benefit. <laughs> the officials are coming from where? They're coming from Houston. All right, is this a crew we've had before? I've never we neither one of us have had this crew before. They're they're highly ranked by the uh, Houston Tasso officials. So um, the board sent what they do is they meet the board meets and when when a team asks for the best available, um, you know, there's not many games. I don't think the Houston chapter's only been used, I think, two, maybe three games this week. And um, mm. so we neither one we have agreed to use officials neither one of us have used before and the best available and um, so that's what we did he hadn't used houston chapter ever and we've had a couple times so so either you or the land passes coach contacts the houston chapter or you contact the uil now the home team only only time you contact uil when you can't agree what chapter you want but mm. the home team does it they they contacted and and then i followed up and sent an email to me that who we who we had and um, uh, assured us neither one of us had ever had them before. All right. Uh, haven't asked you to do this, I don't think, the entire year, and that is to give us a, 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 what you know so far on commitments of our seniors to colleges. We know that Calvante and Tykees were committed to Arkansas, then they decommitted when Morris was uh, let go. What do you know right now about our seniors? Really nothing. They're still being highly recruited, and uh, those two, and um, you know nobody's committed. Uh, no, no early signing um, unless they change their mind, and we're going we're going to encourage them to, you know, sign on the second date because I, I don't think they're 100 percent, and um, you know I, we don't want distractions. Mm -hmm. if, if we can win this week, um, honestly, if we get beat, I don't care when they sign. That, <laughs> that's just you know I just don't want no distractions. You know, in the championship week, and uh, so if we win, I, I don't think you'll see either one of those guys sign early. And then, but we've got a lot of guys fixed to get scholarships. There's no doubt about it. And um, so, and getting being really recruited very heavily right now. 
Um, but none of them's going to sign early. I would think that certainly someone has to be talking to Quentin Owens. Yeah, he's one of them. Uh, you know, Rayvon can play if he wants to play. I mean, there's a lot of them. I could keep uh, Quan, Quan Brown. I mean, you know, DeAndre Bowman. Um, you know, there's a lot of them. Cole Whitlock. Um, there's a lot of them going to have an opportunity to play football at some level if they want to. And, um, you know, Kay Johnson on, off on the offensive line. Um, so, uh, Kel Williams. I'm probably missing people, but, you know, I'm trying to get all the seniors. But all those guys are going to have opportunities to play somewhere if, if if they want to. All right, you mentioned that we were derailed last year in this round. That's right, by Liberty Hill. You doing anything different this year in preparation? No, we just – we mentioned it. I mean, we talk about that. You know, we all, you always – we always talk about that loss and how the, bad the feeling was and mm. us fight as hard as we can not to, you know, feel that feeling again. And, um, you know, and if we do whatever we can, fight hard as we can, play as hard as we can, and, you know, if something bad happens, you can live with it. But um, let's do whatever we can not to get that feeling again. And, you know, so we got a chip on our shoulder. And um, we have since that game. And we played uh, – well, you know, and offensively we bogged down a little bit in the red zone last week, but mm -hmm. I look, we got to look at it. We only had nine possessions, and one of them was a kneel down. So that's eight offensive possessions. That's not very many. And um, so uh, one of them we went for it on fourth down. And, um, you know, we we went for about three of them, but a couple of them was in the red zone that we did not get. And uh, so, you know, we got to get more possessions. And, you know, I thought they slowed the game down on us, and they really did. They didn't have much yardage, and they – they milked the clock, and mm -hmm. we weren't expecting that. Mm -hmm. And uh, but that's um, okay. You know, we scored three out of our first four possessions, and and uh, we should have had three touchdowns out of four possessions, and we just kind of missed one. And but we're we're going to get better there, and we worked hard at it this week, and we're excited on on. Uh, you know, I don't think this group's played its best offense, defense, special teams, and that's what we're excited about. We think we're we're going to play a great football game, and and see if we can move on. You mentioned Heritage uh, milking it in the, either the third or the fourth quarter. Uh, boy, I was so proud of our defense. They took a lot of time off the clock in one drive and came up empty. Yeah. Uh, when they got down toward the red zone, yeah. uh, we, we stiffened up. They did. I, don't think, I think they got down there one time and, um, you know, maybe twice. And um, um, we gave them the short field on, on when we didn't get the fourth down and then maybe got down there one other time and didn't get it. But uh, it was a phenomenal effort. By the defense, and you're sitting there and say, "Hey, we're up three scores, and they really hadn't scored." Um, you know, so take a lot of time if you're going to score, and you know, <laughs> we don't care. We we don't care where, when, how. We just want to play the next week. Uh, Scott, I figured up uh, in five years: 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. If I've done my math correct, this is 77 games for the Carthage football program. That's a bunch. <laughs> It is a bunch, and it, it's, a, it's a wear and tear on your body and uh, mind and stuff. And, uh, and you know, it's a grind. Um, it's mm. like an NFL season every year. If you're playing, playing this, this long, we're playing, um, you know, more than, you know, colleges do. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but we wouldn't have it any other way. That's, you know, we wouldn't have it any other way. We want to play this, this deep and, and, you know, 15, 16 weeks. And it's, it's about a 20-week deal when you put all of – Two days in and everything to scrimmages and it's a long road, but it's what we always tell tell the players. It's it's not a sprint; it's a marathon. Well, now it's become a sprint because we're mm -hmm. at the end. It's just what we talked about just uh, just the other day. You know, we always talk about is it a marathon or a sprint? It's a marathon. That's what all the players are saying. Well, now it's a sprint because we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So let's. Uh, uh, and told, I told them the light at the end of the tunnel is, is that tunnel at AT&T. And we can see it. We've been there. But let's make sure that we play our as hard as we possibly can and play our best and see what happens. And I tell you, a group that we uh, seldom mention on here, boy, a big part of this grind are uh, Summer Surratt and the other wives, coaches. <laughs> wi coaches I mean, the yeah. wives of the coaches. Yeah, they're all saying is uh, – the wives or the moms, dads, everything. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, they got to carry what a bunch of our coaches or uh, probably 90% of our coaches have kids and, and um, you know, have to carry them to practices, basketball practice right now, mm -hmm. pick them up. And, um, 
you know, have to get them here or there or whatever. And uh, they wouldn't have it either, any other way either. Uh, you know, our wives are winners and they want us to win. And they're, um, they'll be excited if we can win the championship and it's over for a while <laughs> and get a break. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, it's kind of like we always said my wife had, especially when our kids were young, is uh, she had pitched me Addy or, or Jet like 28 toss or pitching to toss the ball to me uh -huh. <laughs> because it was my time, you know, to take care of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, they're a little older now. But uh, anyway, we wouldn't have it any way. They wouldn't have any other way. They, would, they wouldn't have it any other way. We have special wives just like we have special coaches. All right, well, I hope you can tell uh, from this interview that Coach Rett's excited about this one. I could tell it on Monday at Chalk Talk. And, uh, boy, we hope you are too. Uh, fairly easy drive down there and one of the best stadiums, best high school stadiums around, uh, New Caney, Randall Reed Stadium. Used to be known as Texan Drive Stadium, new name for it now. 7.30 is the kickoff Friday night. The Bulldogs win that, and they're on their way to Arlington the following week. We'll be on the air around 6.45 or 7 o'clock with a look at the starting lineups. For Coach Surratt, I'm Larry Allen. Have a great weekend, everyone.